This is Scott Richmond and Arnie Sherman. You're listening to What Do You Know on News Talk KGVO, AM 1290 and 101.5 FM. Good morning, Arnie Sherman. How are you today? Scott, I'm doing good. How are you? I'm great. You know, this past couple of weeks, there's been a lot of, uh, you know, change in the new administration coming in. Lots of executive orders signed and a couple of, you know, more than a couple of them controversial. But uh, given our guests today who are in the solar energy business, yep. I thought we'd uh, review some general facts and information about, you know, the energy sector and, uh, you know, as a good lead into our guests coming in here. Arnie, lay it on <laughs> me. What do you know? Well, I don't know that much. You know, we did this show uh, a while back with uh, former Governor Brian Schweitzer, who, uh, you know, wrote right. a book about energy. So right. I know a little bit about that. But, uh, you know, there's a lot of controversy. The president signed an executive order, you know, uh, reinvigorating the uh, Dakota, you know, access pipeline and the Keystone pipeline, which, uh, you know, are controversial for lots and lots of reasons. Right. We're not going to get into that. And, and there's a lot of continued discussion and debate in the country about fossil fuels. You know, remember drill, baby, drill? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fossil fuels versus, versus alternative energy. Right. What's interesting is two-thirds of Americans support the continued and rapid development of alternative energy, you know, as compared to uh, fossil fuel. And, and we need to do more than we're doing. And we're doing pretty well. We now have in the area of, of solar, there are more than a million solar power installations in the United States. And to give you a comparison, in, uh, at the turn of the century, in the year 2000, there were only a thousand such projects. Now there's a million a million projects producing 27 million gigawatts of solar energy. And for, our listeners, for our listeners, that's enough to power 6 million homes. Incredible. But that's still only 1% of our energy right, needs. We're, right, we're right. just scratching the surface. surface. And a number of countries. And that's residential. How about commercial or right, industrial? I mean, I mean just, there, a lot of it is or, commercial, industrial, but I'm just converting it so that okay, people, okay, okay. people would understand it. You know, there are other, you know, we're not at the top of the uh, of the food chain on doing uh, alternative energy. Uh, Germany and China are the world's leaders in applying. China? Yeah. Huh. They're using solar and wind. Okay. You know, power as an alternative. And, uh, you know, it's, it's a good tool to curb uh, climate change issues and air pollution issues. And the cost has dropped. That's one of the things we'll talk about with our, our guests today from uh, Remote Power System. Costs have dropped. The biggest fundamental issue that w still has to be grappled with is the whole storage issue, power storage. Because, sure. for example, with solar, you only produce it when it's sunny. Right. How do you store it efficiently so that when it's nighttime or... It's, Montana winters. Or Montana winters, we don't see the sun for three months. How do you, what kind of batteries do you develop? And there are some technologies now that are put in play. And, in fact, Tesla has a, uh, a huge battery storage project that they're doing, uh, you know, uh, in the United States in order to create batteries that are economical and that can be used commercially and residentially right. to store power so that it can be released when uh, when solar doesn't work. And if that, you know, comes to fruition and, and develops as I think it will, then you're going to have a much more of an interest from a cost basis and an environmental and air quality basis of, of not you know, drilling, you know, continuing to focus so heavily on uh, on uh, fossil fuels. And we should ask our guests this, but is it safe to say or to think about it, uh, storage of energy similar to storage of data in the sense of how you were, they were able to shrink down the size of the medium? Yeah, well, I think that's absolutely the case. Over years, yeah. right? Make it lighter, faster, and more efficient. Right. Well, there's a new, uh, there's a new um, electric car that's coming out. Right. And uh, I forget what it's called, it's the FF91 or whatever, but um, it has a 400 and something mile range on its battery. Right. The battery produces a thousand horsepower. Oh my God. And goes zero to 60 to 2.9 seconds. <laughs> I mean, it's battery power. That's huge. I mean, that's, that's like a, a big car. advancement over, uh, you know, the first electric cars, you know, that came out the Prius. And it almost doesn't matter what it weighs because if it, with that efficiency, it's like a tank of yeah, gas. Yeah, I mean, it. it it doesn't stretch the imagination to think in four or five years you're going to have a battery that's going to last. You know, you won't even have to think about it. You know, a thousand miles and gives you complete fuel efficiency and uh, 
Um, you know, you don't have to worry about uh, all of the problems of uh, oil and, you know, oil and uh, diesel price fluctuations. I mean, it's clear it's not going to go down again. Oil and gas prices are going to start going up again. And, uh, you know, and you felt the squeeze as I did when gas was up over $4 a gallon. Right, right, right. You know, and, and this way it's a good counterbalance to it. So I'm interested in hearing about what's going on in the solar industry and how much um, response there is. Yeah, how much response there is in Missoula to, you know, to the proposition of, uh, of deploying solar energy as an alternative to regular, you know, gas or electric or propane or. These or, guys have an, in, I know, know just from a little bit of my research that these guys have an interesting take on it with respect to how they are selling it, charging for it and creating a recurrent stream of revenue. Well, good. Let's get them on here and talk to them about it. I'm looking forward to it. You are listening to What Do You Know? Our guests today are Ryan Tolley and TJ Fight from Remote Power Systems. We are presented proudly by Don Maddox, Glacier Sotheby's International Realty. Back after this with the fellows from Remote Power Systems. All right, we are back with the gentleman from Remote Power Systems. TJ, Ryan, welcome to the show. Thank you. So tell us a little about what your sweet spot is. What, what do you what do you guys really do in the in the solar area? Uh, right now the m- majority is homes, solar for your homes. Solar uh, for your homes. We do do commercial as well, and uh, as our company is growing here, we're getting into manufacturing some products and different things as well. Of your own proprietary products. Yes. So I'm a homeowner. I'm angry and, and uh, I'm ruffled about how much my power costs are. <laughs> I read your ad. I call you up. What's your pitch to me about why I should, you know, put a solar installation into my home? Well, it's pretty simple financially. Um, if you look at energy costs, historically have gone up for decades. You can go back almost forever and they're traditionally going up and up and up. So when you get a solar system, you're basically levelizing your cost power right. and uh, a lot of times i'd say you know if, if we could come and install a gas spigot on the side of your house and uh it's maybe even 10 cents a gallon more than right. what you're paying now right but i guarantee it won't change for the next 20 years is that yeah. worth it for you sure yeah and that's so it's it's basically the same concept and what what's the difference between your role ryan and, and tj's role <laughs> in the company what do you do you do the same things well we, he's uh sales marketing into the deal i'm a nuts and bolts guy you we assemble the systems so we we assemble the systems make them work he's the wizard design. he's have, the wizard okay the wizard on this so wizard how well, how has the technology changed i mean you know solar's been around for a pretty long time right and there's panels and you plug them in and What's, what's new in the solar industry that we that the average person isn't aware of? Well, uh, what's really new in the solar industry is, is basically something that we we're, we're don't really even see. It's the cost of the panels. It's the cost of manufacturing the solar panels have dropped. So that's really what's making things a lot more affordable for the average person. Uh, there are some technology changes that have changed, you know, basically MPPD tracking and different things with which are basically software things that sure. go into components that, that, you know, help make the power, you might say. Right. But uh, other than that, it's it's cost. And also, uh, you know, in implementing the solar. Right. So. What about the, the issue that's always brought up, which is storage? Are there any new solutions in storage to so that you can use it when it's, you know, on a rainy day on, you know, or like the winter, the entire winter in Montana? Yes, there is. There are some advances that have come out in the lithium-ion battery uh, where uh, the uh, capacity is, is so much greater. In other words, what we can use of the battery. Uh, with the traditional uh, lead-acid batteries out there, you know, we get to a 50% discharge rate technically is where you got to stop at. Right. The lithium-ion batteries allow us to go to 100% discharge rate, which says, okay, we need half the size of the battery bank. The other neat part about the battery technology that has kicked up is it's a lot more efficient to put power into the batteries and a lot more efficient to take power out of the batteries. And then one really neat thing after hauling tons and tons of batteries over the years is they're so much lighter. Well, that's good. So lighter and greater storage is what we were talking about before. Right. So 
if in a typical home, let's say in a typical, I don't know, 2,500 square foot home, the, the storage capacity that's now available, how long will it power your house, you know, given, let, let's say you have a bunch of cloudy days or you're not, you're not producing a, right. enough, enough from, uh, you know, natural sources? Well, that typically, you know, I'm not going to, I'm going to kind of dodge the question a little bit sure. because it, it has more to do with energy lifestyle than it does the square footage of the house. Right. Uh, but what we try to typically design around up here is 10 days of autonomy. Right. So you can go 10 days on a battery backup, which yep. is pretty good. If it's sized correctly. Right. Yes. It's pretty good. And, and that fits in with, you know, a budget that doesn't scare off, a, a, you know, somebody that. So how do, yeah, so talk a little bit about that, though. How do people actually tra- pay for and how do they buy solar energy now versus how they did it years ago? Well, years ago, uh, predominantly how this the solar industry basically started out was essentially uh, off-grid people. Right. Uh, where there was no power. Uh, so this provided a means for them to, to produce power and, and use it at their, you know, place that they live so they had a cabin up in the mountains right and they wanted that power but what's it's kind of transpired here over the whole bunch of years is is grid tie and grid tie actually makes sense for for a big segment of the the customers that are are buying solar because we're using the power grid as a battery right so we're essentially running the meter back x amount of watts and then uh, when we are using it then we we credit, we pull the credits off of that and, and can use it during times that, you know, we're not making solar. And what you, in that, with buying it, what, what has really made the industry explode, especially in other states, is financing. It, it has changed the industry. So forward. you can finance the, the, the entire setup. So what's a, uh, an average kind of setup cost? Oh. Residentially. Well, if we're talking a five kilowatt system, I think you're looking somewhere between fifteen, seventeen thousand on a rooftop. But that can also where where it changes and where the discussion changes. I start throwing out numbers like that. That scares everyone. Right. That, right. Yeah. Well, yeah. But when I can say, hey, we got a financing package for you, and your your bill's a hundred bucks a month, but we can we can provide you the same power with solar for a hundred bucks a month, or for even ninety bucks a month. Sometimes we can get it below what cheaper you're really paying. That's when the discussion changes, right? And that's what happened. Um, I mean, we're we're based here. We're doing business here. We also um, are doing business in other states. And there are states where we walk in the door, and the monthly payment is twenty five, thirty, forty percent lower than what they're currently paying for the power bill. Right, with that much right? higher yeah. power cost. Yep. And so you've shifted the conversation away from having to make a big outlay of a capital expense and now do a monthly expense. Is there a contract that is uh, required of the client? Just our installation contract. And then uh, the financing is not with us. There's, there's all kinds of right. third parties. So this is, like the, difference, this is like yeah. the difference in the audio and industry about the old days when you had to buy a car before they had lease. leasing. Yeah. Leasing rent programs. Yep. And do you, well, that's a good question, Arnie. So when you buy technology in 2017, what if the technology changes in 2020? Can you get new technology, new batteries, new panels? You can. Um, would you? I wouldn't. If it's still producing the power you need, why go? Right. Okay. Get more right. expense. So. How often does a system in a in a residence need servicing? Uh, hardly at all. Right. Some cleaning, maybe. Or could it maybe you know, some wire gets disconnected somehow in a, sto- in a windstorm or something? No. No. So no, it's I'm, it's pretty. Once it's installed, it just it just goes on its own. Very rarely. Just like the power company. You know, and, and and some of the warranties that are on, like solar panels, you know, are between twenty and twenty-five year warranties. Some of the inverters that we use, particularly the micro inverters, they're running with a twenty to twenty-five year warranty on them. Right. Mm-hmm. Are there are there government subsidies, write-offs, tax advantages to have in the system? Yeah, uh, the federal income tax credit of thirty percent of the contract price, and then in Montana we have a state tax credit if you're married, flat a thousand dollar if you're single, five hundred. So. Is that right? Mm-hmm. That on top of the thirty mm-hmm. percent, which you don't get through buying. True it's like stuff. it's like Aren't being you? free. It's like free power. So it's, it's <laughs> really like is, is it really the resistance monetarily? They see the big sticker price and it surprises them. Is that the old, is that the major obstacle for why it's not in every home? Yeah, I mean, 
So I saw this in other states. That as the prices of power start to equal what your monthly payment would be for solar, that conversation gets started more in the community and in, in, in the sales process. Right. And really what it turns into is an educational process. Right now, everyone thinks, oh, solar would be great, but it's too expensive. Right. Right. Well, That's a general realize, feeling. Yeah. And, and until we see more of it here in Montana, that's going to be the feeling. So our job is really educating people. Sure. Um, what state that you work in is it accepted the most? I mean, where do you have the least resistance? California and Texas. And, th- and are those two states where their power costs are much higher than we have here? Yeah. In California, there's uh, much higher. And then in Texas, uh, there's still a lot of really good rebates. So that helps. That's on top of the 30% and everything else. So that knocks the price down a little bit more. The other place in the country where we're not doing business that is just going crazy is the Northeast. Uh, power costs up there are really Really crazy. going up. I know. I know. I've talked to my friends and their monthly power bills are staggering in some cases. Mm-hmm. Huh. Well, it's very. It, well, what is interesting to me is is that while the cost and the financing is now more understandable by the the general consumer, and they can get their arms around it when they start to be able to do the comparisons, the other question is, what does it look like on your at your residence? Like, you know, I think people have a, uh, in their mind it's all these crazy panels all over your rooftop. It's not quite as uh, as um, it doesn't take up as much area, does it? As it as it once. It's not as up. unsightly as it used to be. N- no, I mean it's not like the old uh, hot water where you have the tank and the big <laughs> panel leaning sideways on the house and all that stuff. Right. Um, our installations are pretty uh, flat to the roof. Right. You know, they're only coming off the roof a few inches. Is that right? Um, we can get for people who are concerned about the way they look. Um, you know, we can get solid black panels. Um, so it just looks like yeah, it might look better with your roof color. Um, How long does it take to install in a typical house? You know, uh, generally, if we if all the stars line up and and everything is going good and all our equipment is is here, we can generally get on and off house in one day. Really, that's pretty but good. Some some days it might we might roll over to the next day. Huh? That's pretty good. So and let it, me ask you this: What's the resistance? You know, I mean, you're talking about residential. Shouldn't this be the same? economic you know formula for commercial use and and for office buildings and factories and plants and that sort of thing is it the same uh, the, the same uh, economics apply yeah uh the only difference would be the utilities sometimes they have different rates right. for commercial than they do versus residential right. so um it's just a matter of getting hold of your bill and and doing an analysis to see you know, how it's going to work for you. Sure. But there seems to be from, you know, more resistance to them in commercial installations. And I'm wondering, is it the cost still for them or is it other factors that come in on the commercial side of things? No, the, the cost actually on a per watt basis, you know, if you're installing sure. flooring, it's per square foot. Right. Um, is watt. actually less because you're, the economies of scale. Right. You're putting in a bigger unit and, and yeah. advertised across more. Um, I guess the only barrier that we have here right now is the fact that um, we have a limit on mm-hmm. the size of system that we can install. So, and that's, um, I think that's before legislation right now to, to increase that limit. Mm-hmm. But uh, that could be a barrier, I guess, for someone if they need a 300 kilowatt system and they're only allowed to install 50. Right. Um, and most of the rural electric cooperatives have us pegged down to 10 kW. Right. Which, you know, nowadays that number is, is kind of out of line because the average size of the solar array that we're putting into the, to most places is, is approaching that number. Right. So is there a way to make change? I mean, is there, is there an advocacy group that's, leg- that's, that's pushing for legislation to make changes in that? Yes, there is. There's uh, the MREA, which seems to be, you know, kind of in the forefront of some of this stuff and and uh and there is some some sure. grassroots stuff that's kind of moving that way so how does solar compare to wind installations i mean uh, cost wise uh, cost benefit wise you know somebody comes to you and say well I, I also have a lot of wind up in my property i'm thinking about putting a you know wind turbine in or one you know they have some well, small ones how does it compare 
Well, there's a couple things with wind. Wind is really a microclimate uh, related resource. In other words, we have put wind generators up in the past that, you know, we have two of them that are separated by a quarter of a mile, and one guy looks down and sees the other guy's wind generator is always moving and his isn't. Right. So then we, we've gotten phone calls over that over the years, and he just happens to be out of the wind. Uh, solar is, is a lot more consistent than wind is. Uh, in Montana, you can easily get into a place where there's too much wind really? for, for the design of the wind generator. So it's really kind of a careful deal. It really has to be investigated before we do it. Right. I've even heard when I, I was looking at wind or solar mm-hmm. in my house, somebody talked about, well, you have dirty wind where you live. I didn't even know what that meant, but I assume that means it's inconsistent and moves in different directions and that sort of thing. And it's something that we do. I mean, we install, you know, quite a bit of it, but on the same token, you know, what goes up eventually comes down and, and <laughs> you know, every it's mechanical where solar panels, you know, hey, they just sit there Let's and be quick, they sit there, right. I, let me do a quick ID. You're listening to What Do You Know on News Talk KGVO. Our guests are Ryan Tolley and TJ Fight from Remote Power Systems. We are proudly presented by Don Maddox Glacier Sotheby's International Realty. That's always a mouthful for you, but you do it. Well is, it that. is, it is. Arnie, <laughs> next question. <laughs> well, who are your competitors? Who's out there doing uh, you know that you have to that you have to uh, pay attention to? No one. Well, don't say that. Well, we we, we have <laughs> Scott and I. We're going to announce yeah. on this show that we're we no, but, we have competitors trouble. out there, but in and, and things like that. But I mean, really, what we do as a company for we can in, encompass the the full spectrum of everything. In other words, we can install the solar, we can enjo- install the generators, the inverters, the whole nine yards. Where you know other companies will have the generator company be a separate company they're a solar company and vice you know then it then it really gets to be a crazy deal uh the other couple things that we do is one is 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 uh we're offering financing right okay or the ability to get financing and the other is the fabrication into the deal what we're doing we're building what we call a what we call a power pod right now which is a ballasted solar array we essentially gave me a break. Hold on, TJ. What does that mean for the layer? Very complicated oh, words. Well, it means that we're, we're not digging a uh, six or eight foot deep hole, filling it full of concrete with a pipe sticking out of it. You know, that takes, you know, our technicians at least a day of heartache to get that put into place. Right. So uh, this is above the ground. This is above the ground. It's engineered. Uh, engineered stamped. So it, it is a, a truly designed uh, legal, basically 2KW solar array. So that, are you designing these yourself or are you in collaboration with other people working on this? We, we design these ourselves and build them ourselves. Uh, and then we have engineers, you know, look through the whole thing as we do it. So we still have to get a stamp of approval on right. it, which we have those stamp of approvals. And, and we can basically run out in one day, you know, set a bunch of these if if needed or one or two or one wherever we need to basically do it it takes keeps us off the roof uh makes the solar installation a lot cleaner a lot easier sure and uh how much how much area do you need well the solar array for one one system basically takes up about a uh, 10 foot by 10 foot square right and that traditionally powers how much that's a 2K array, which generally we're looking at the average of probably, what, three or four of those, Ryan? Yeah. Depend on the customer and the customer's needs. Yeah, but if you're, if you're these bigger houses that are built on ranchettes, you know, a few acres, right? Um, typically you're using a little bit more power maybe than the average home. So you're going to need a 6 to 8 kilowatt. Um, we go into the neighborhoods. Um, Generally, a little bit smaller homes. Maybe right. a lot of these newer neighborhoods are, are built more energy efficient. Might need a little bit smaller of a system. Right. Um, but. Are you able to go into like existing developments and to do a spec for like, okay, there are 15 houses here. How do we get everybody on the same on the same feed, I guess, or energy uh, system? Is that possible? Especially as they're being built. E- oh, like with a contractor. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, we could do that. 
Um, we could do that from the aspect of working with the realtor who has the model home and say this is an add-on that they can do. Right. We can work with the contractor themselves if they want to include it in the packages. Um, there's lots of ways. I mean, there's big, you know, big national builders like Dr. Horton and companies like that. Right. That put packages together like that. Is that right? Um, we've, uh, I have approached some in the past. Um, nothing's ever materialized, but it doesn't mean that we couldn't do it. It's interesting, just this, you know, here and in Bozeman and other places, especially Bozeman where there's a lot more building. Sure. Well, you would think that there's opportunities. Yeah, community solar is is the term that they kind of stick to it. And right. It seems like some places now they're putting out, you know, in the developments, they're actually putting aside land and space for... Well, it would be a good selling solar. point, right? Well, our system, we have a solar, mm-hmm. you know solar community here and you can hook right into it when you move in and yeah it's pretty good how large an organization how many people do you have working for you well uh remote power systems 14 years you started 14 yeah, years ago 14, 14 years, years. Yeah. and uh we joined forces uh going on two years ago now right so uh brought my contractor's license from california and so we started doing work there and we have another partner that helped us get into texas and things like that um and we have 20 total, 20 employees or so. Did in you three think 14 states? years ago you were going to get that big? I mean, 20 people is a lot of people to worry about every paying every uh, 20, 20 years ago, the solar deal was quite a bit different than it is now. Yeah. Uh-huh. So, <laughs> no, I always, you know, from ever since I was a kid, my dad was who got me interested in solar and. And he actually built his house in the 70s that that actually had all the right facing stuff and the roof and all that and had these ideas. And he, he told me one day that, hey, you can make power without any noise. And I said, what? Yeah. And that's well, that what, really that's what's... Anyway, in the yep. 70s when first solar yep. powers were first that's right. deployed. So, yep. I mean, he, he, he was thinking about it and all that. Then when I was in the... I'm a veteran. I was in the Coast Guard for a bunch of years and... We got handed the task of automating offshore light towers and and buoys, and we learned the hard way about solar. Right. And that piqued my interest even more, and and it's just been a passion of ours for a lot of years. We're we're a family. Both Ryan and I have family in the business, and we're so we're we're basically family businesses. Sure. How, what, yeah, where are you located, too? You're here in Missoula in western Montana. We're located in Stevensville, Montana. We're also located in Redding, Montana. and, and Redding, California. Or Redding, California, sorry, and then Austin, well, Texas. Almost, it's almost like it's part of Montana, right? right. But we are, we're a Montana-based business that's actually doing business in, in yeah. other states, which is t- typically the opposite. Exactly. Right, exactly. So Their base is here in western Montana, and they're expanding right. outward to well, they're in California, Austin, Texas. And what are some of the growth markets that you are comfortable sharing, potentially? Well, some of the growth markets that we're really looking at, I mean, is from a, well, you know, from a, uh, an equipment point of view is, is actually the power pod. Uh, but some of the areas that we're really looking at starting to do more business in is we're, we're kind of looking to the west of us. Sure. And actually, when we look at this, we're looking at, at basically the sky's limit. Sure. As it, and we're, we are on the ground floor with what I think is going to end up happening all the way across this country. Mm-hmm. And to us, all we do is we see, oh, hey, you know, we love to do what we're doing. This is a passion for everybody that's involved in our, our business all the way across the board. And, hey, opportunity is everywhere. Sure. So, TJ, you're designing power pods that, you know, engineers are you're giving stamp of approval on. But you didn't go to engineering school. I mean, you you did this, you know, from grassroots experience, trial and error, right? Yeah. Uh, we have done a lot of stuff on mountaintop sites. Believe me, if you can make something work here in right. western Montana, you can make something work anywhere. Right. Right. In but your home. own personal experience is, is, is basically, you know, on the job. I mean, you right. didn't go to school to learn how to build a solar, solar power system. That's right. I mean, you got it from your dad. You were in, you know, you were in the military, in the Coast Guard, whatever. Mm-hmm. You've, 
you've done this, you know, by trial and error and, you know, by bootstrap learning. Well, and, and we've had a lot of good people that, in, as our walk has increased through this whole process, uh, we have met a lot of good pioneers that are have been in this business, uh, both from, you know, the nuts and bolts into the deal, the marketing side, the sales right. side, and, and we've been able to see the whole business evolve. Right. The whole solar industry. Do you industry. stay on top of reading the industry materials and the updates and Absolutely. the studies and all that? Because there's a ton of stuff yeah. out there about Absolutely. This. That's, that is our edge. Yeah. You just pay attention to what's going on and you see how what is being thought about and conceptualized and researched, how you can apply it in a, in a commercial way. Yep. That, that's right. And, and some of the next steps that are coming up in the technology is microgrid technology which is the next step. We're already creating microgrid. What is that? What is, mic- what is the microgrid technology? What we do is we take a farm or ranch or a house or something like that. We, we create it in its own primary grid. In other words, hey, they might have utility power to it, but they have the solar panels, they have wind or micro hydro, a battery backup and the whole nine yards. And then essentially the utility is their backup power. Huh. You're the primary. So their system would be the primary power. The utility would be that. But what's really cool about microgrid technology, when you start looking at from the community point of view and community neighborhoods, is you can start linking these microgrids into a truly redundant, non-centralized power grid. And technically, that's how a lot of third world countries right now, which we call third world right. countries. Right, they're ahead of us. That are ahead of us. Right. And the, actually, the technology was created here. But yet, yeah, here we're, I think, I don't want to quote the number because I could be wrong, but we're, we're not the top in the world in this. No, right? Germany, China, we got about 27 uh, gigabytes of, of uh, p- power across right. a million projects. That's the numbers I threw out I earlier. I mean, think about it. If we all had these microgrids and these community grid power networks and the whole night where well, we're not re- relying on the centralized power grid, what would it do to us worldwide as far as from a strategic way of thinking? Sure. All of a sudden, hey, you know. Self-esteem. Yeah. Maybe we don't. So just you know, to give anything. you, just so you walk away learning something from us, the name of the show <laughs> What do you know? <laughs> I can share with you. In terms of uh, uh, full, uh, you know, photovoltaic power megawatts, Germany produces thirty-two point four thousand. Italy is sixteen thousand three sixty. China is eighty-three hundred. The U.S. is seventy-seven hundred. So we're fourth on the list. You, you want to know? That a lot of times you'll hear people say, well, "We're in Montana. Does solar even work here?" <laughs> well, no. Guess what? No, we don't have a sun here, unfortunately. Germany no. has less sun hours. Yeah, we do. Is they that do. right? They do. The number one solar country in the world has less sun hours than Montana. You know, that's, that's actually interesting to note. What about, um, you know, in terms of communities? You mentioned California and Texas that are a little bit ahead of us in terms of their. Is that because their expense, their utility costs are much higher, um, or is it just that it's more of a green mentality and mindset? No, because uh, I can count on one hand the amount of people who actually bought because of the green aspect. It's usually because of the other green, the money. Is that, that right? That is the driving factor. Um, it, you know, the, that's the line. It, it the the feel good green is a byproduct. Sure. Um, but when it makes financial sense, that's when everyone jumps sure. on board. So, yeah, in, in California, prices for, uti- for utility power are really high. In Texas, they still have some really good rebates. Um, other states, the same. And what happened in those states, also the reason they're ahead of Montana, their population is just so much bigger. So the big companies, mm-hmm. the solar cities, things like that, they're moving into those states. With, right. and, and Montana's probably the last place on their mind, so solar city. Right. You know, they're going to go to other populated states um, and go there first before they come up here. Right. So um, that's also what has. Right. Well, and, and that. you know, as we talked about where we rank, you know, countries like Germany, Italy, you know, Norway, Iceland, where the power costs are really high. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's made sense. I mean, I think in, in Scandinavia, some of those countries are, you know, maybe a majority of their power is now starting to come from alternative energy. You know, we got Iceland where all the buses are, you know, are, uh, are 
alternative energy powered and the power grids are are you know supported by wind and and solar and hydro and you know all those sorts of things are good role models because they've made them work but their economics are a little bit different mm-hmm. as our energy costs are going to go up i mean i don't foresee five or six years from now the public utility costs being low i mean you know rock bottom they're going to go up if anything they're going to go up and i'll tell you the other thing that's interesting is you know how people get really upset when they lose they don't have their cell phone they, right. they lost their cell phone so they don't they're not connected right. talk the most frustrating thing that i've ever experienced and you've experienced this yeah because we talk thing. about it, yeah talk about it was when we lost that power two summers ago when i think i first met you guys right yep. and a level of, of level what, three of, and a half days we didn't have it or three and a half like days that. a level of frustration that knew no height of no, there was no ceiling to how angry i got <laughs> because you were so de- you're so dependent on it and you don't realize how dependent you are until you don't have it and uh i don't care and you know what makes it worse is having a generator outside that's humming away and like the noise pollution that it's creating i know you can get inexpensive or like you know cheap inverter ones or what have you but it's just everything falls apart when that happens so scott let me sell you a solar power system it's got not only i talk to these guys effective but <laughs> you got 10 days of backup you're never going to have this problem again your frustration is Who's gone. The, uh, whatever we can talk about that later <laughs> you are listening to what do you know on news like hbo yeah. Yeah. arnie it's is cheaper twice the price Look, and it, for peace of mind, Scott, for you <laughs> and your family. I, I mean, those you. are all the things that you know. I'm, I'm, I'm you know, I'm playing you're, around. Your are sell itself, right on, doesn't I'm, it? Am I right on point on this? Yeah, yeah. I mean, those customers are always right, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> everyone has a different their their values. The reason they want to go right. solar, it could be, you know, it's from the green to the dependency. Yep, self reliance, sustainability, saving money. Um, it's not our job to decide why you want to do it. Just but in show general, you the, the common denominator for a person who buys is somebody that looks at whatever their primary motivating yeah. factor. It's a smart decision across there's the no board. There's no bad. There's no. There's no downside any longer. You I mean, kind of gonna, removed. It's not going to cost you more. You got it financed now. You have the capability with storage to to alleviate with one of the big concerns about it. It's. The right thing to do for the environment. I mean, it checks off so many boxes that it, it really is just the, uh, and you know this, it's just trying to overcome the the basic uneducated, you know, um, consumer who says, oh, it's too expensive. Yeah, I've I don't ne- need it. My I've pal- never had anyone come back and say, I wish I didn't do it. Right, yeah, exactly. I've had them come back and say, I wish I would have done a bigger system. <laughs> Hey, it's more reliable than marriage, right? <laughs> there are plenty of people who have come back and said, I wish I didn't do it. But <laughs> if you do solar and you're, you don't have that, and I, I can see why. Once you've made the decision, once you've bought into it and you've done it, there, you know, there isn't a downside. It's, it's efficient. It doesn't, as you mentioned earlier, it doesn't need repairs. It's, a system is not going to, even if you get a newer system, as long as this one's being efficient and, you know, and uh, matching or... or uh, uh, you know, covering uh, the uh, you know the sort of the, the, the difference between what uh, the grid would charge and what you charge, and then eventually it's paid off, right? And then right, and then how much does it cost to operate? Other than um, a meter fee, maybe if you're still connected to the grid, where they're charging they charge you to keep that meter on the house, right. or um, replacing a- a- after warranties. So you'd be replacing something after warranty, but there's really not much cost. Right. So the so actually, someone who's building a house, it makes sense to put this in right from the beginning. It could be the it can be part of your mortgage all all, all around. You don't even feel the difference. Right. You know when it's covered on a 30 year mortgage, and then all of a sudden you start out from the very beginning, your power bills are almost non-existent at that point. Is that is that fair? Yeah. Yeah. There's no downside. Well, how come we don't have one of these? Things? I'm I'm wired. I'm set up to put solar. Are you? I just didn't do it, but I'm thinking about it now. <laughs> Why wouldn't you? It's a no. It's no going to go up. To. Look, it's an interesting thing. So your guys, so the growth market is obviously the technology and the, the how technology and the financing, and so it, you know, and then the government hopefully co- cooperating and providing more incentives. That can only be a good thing. Um, and then the markets you're looking at, but you guys, before we go to our next break, you guys aren't just doing solar right there are other 
lines of your business to, you know, it's called remote power systems. So it, it's inherent. It's how else can you live and sustain? Well, we, we take know. and, and uh, have had uh, some really challenging projects that we've done over the years. We Remote power systems is all about providing power in remote places. Right. And via, you know, solar, wind, generators, you name it, we've done it. Uh, so, and we, you know, we've also done, you know, TV uh, repeater sites, obviously ra- radio station repeater sites. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have had customers that range all the way from the federal government to you name it. Mm. And telecommunications all the way across the whole board. Uh, we also have equipment all over the world. So, and... So we've had a lot of fun doing this over the years, and it's been a challenge. And, and through all those different projects that we've done, we've been able to take it up a notch. Mm. And uh, around here in, in Montana, we also provide a lot of backup power. Right. So, well, and it's also you're in an industry that's constantly in the news, right? The right. whole area of you know fossil fuel and and energy and alternative energy is constantly you know on the uh, you know on the front burner of almost any kind of uh, public conversation. That's true. You know, and like Ryan was saying earlier about, you know, people, why do they do this? Well, one thing that I like to put on onto this deal is, is put a value on the reason why you want to do this. Look at that value. If you want energy security and sustainable power, in your mind, put a value on it. Sure. Well, say it's worth. I think you made the right, you know, phrase. Energy security. That's right. You know what it's going to cost you. That's right. And you know it's, you know, not going to get shut off. Right. You know, it's not going to be some blowout somewhere. We have to take a break. Yeah, we're running off to a break. Uh, we will be back with our final segment. You are listening to What Do You Know, proudly sponsored and supported by Don Maddox Glacier Sotheby's International Realty. Back after this. Okay, we are back. So, Scott, we were off the air. You asked me, why didn't I put solar in my house? Let me tell you, don't ever build a house. <laughs> yeah, you built a house yeah, in 2010, house. right? And when you start off at the very beginning, you have a budget, right? And so you start picking, all of a sudden, you're picking, you know, hardware and, you know, flooring and wood trim and, you know, countertops. By the time you get down to the very end, my decision was, do I put a driveway in or do I have solar? I mean, we're out of money. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. So, I mean... You, you gotta, you gotta get to with a contractor to begin with. So he says, "Okay, your house is gonna cost you four hundred grand to build and include solar and all that." So it's not on that list at the end sure. between a hot tub, a driveway, or you know some of these other things. Yeah, of course. So anyway, that's why I don't have it, but I'm wired for it. So you are, but we'll you guys are spending some time working with contractors and builders to try to be part of the process as they're specking it out and designing versus aftermarket. Absolutely. Right. And that yep. makes the most sense. Yep. If it's integrated into the system, then you don't have to have that, you know, sort of this resistance is, is uh, you know, dissipated. You were, you were at a house yesterday that was just being framed up so that we could. Is that's that right? Yep. That's the small, that's the way, that's the point of en- entry that you really want to be at. You don't want to convince somebody afterwards that, that, that I mean, you, you do that, but I mean, it's much easier to have it already built into the system. You know, just like they do when you go to. You know, you go buy a car, you say, well, you can get one that's electric and it's all ready to go. And it's about the same monthly payment. And, you know, you make some other, you decide whether or not you want to have, you know, a, a Bose speaker system or you want to have an electric car. Talk to us about portability. Like, what are the technolo- technology advances and developments that will allow people to take power with them when they're, let's say, they're doing an event or a fair or a, a camping trip or what have you? Well, uh, with our manufacturing that we do, we also build what we call the power cube. And the power cube is a basically a total system that's self-contained, hmm. uh, including, you know, a backup generator if needed to turn on and turn off based off of battery voltage. Uh, but the power pod is also that basically the same way uh, it can be portable any of these systems the power pod and the power cube if you move or you're in a, a a building or a place that you don't necessarily own right you can take them with you and that's we designed that years ago because you know we we seen a need that was 
that was needed there, uh, particularly in some of the rental markets and some of the other stuff. So, uh, I mean, we also have commercial companies that purchase these things and use them for all different types of things. Well, are there any franchises out there that are using this? I mean, does somebody like, uh, you know, Popeye's Fried Chicken or whatever decide they want to install solar into all of their uh, franchise operations? Um, th there are. I don't know them off the top of my head. Okay. I, I, we have had conversations with different things. So it would make a lot of sense for, in, in yeah. that kind of relationship. Um, even using uh, what we're, we're calling our power pods, we've, we've talked to some restaurants about having them out there as your shade structure and we could put a table around it and so you got panels over the top that we wire back in. Well, is that really right? Good restaurants, you know, the last thing you want is to have a restaurant have a power failure when you're in there trying. I've had that happen a couple of times. And for businesses, I mean, it's, uh, it's great for marketing. Um, sure. Right. So how does somebody who's listening to the show who said, you know, I've, I really should do the solar installation in my house. How do I get a hold of you? What's the easiest way? Well, the easiest number to remember is, is of course, the 406, but 207-1414 number. But one of the really good ways to get a hold of us is just go on our website. Which is? We have remotepowersystems.com and sunonenergy.com. And what's the difference between the two sites, just so you know? Uh, remote Power Systems has a lot more of the uh, off-grid uh, the, the, the remote power system right, type remote, of stuff. Right. and uh, Sun on Energy is geared more to, uh, I would say, the homeowner and grid tied systems, sure. things like that. Um, so it's it's targeted a little bit more for the other states. Remote power systems, ex Montana, right? All right. Well, these TJ, Ryan, it's been great having you on here. I've learned a lot, and uh, you might have made another customer, so it was worth spending. The hour with us. <laughs> All right. Absolutely. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Thank you. Our guests were Ryan Tolley and TJ Fight, partners in Remote Power Systems. You can find them online at remotepowersystems.com or sunonenergy.com. You can call them at, what is it, 206 240 I screwed it up. Let's do it right one more time. Because now 406-207-1414. Scott, we'll see you next week. Thanks. See you next week, Arnie. Thanks for listening, guys. Thank you for listening to What Do You Know? I can't wait for the next show, Scott. I'm excited too, Arnie. If you'd like to suggest a guest, send me an email at scottrichman at townsquaremedia.com. We'll see you next week. And thanks for listening to News Talk KGVO, AM 1290, 1015 FM, and newstalkkgvo.com.